kind of an exciting year here for Glenwood, especially with the boys' basketball team kind of breaking that you know, 63-year drought going to the state basketball tournament. That's kind of been the highlight here of the first half, I guess. Can you talk about that first half uh, in, in sports? Obviously, that's probably the highlight. Yeah, and obviously any time you're making a state tournament, anything, um, very exciting stuff. So um, boys got hot at the right time, you know, won three games there. Um, you know, beat Atlantic by one, beat Arlen by two in overtime, and then beat Denison by six in the sub-state final to qualify for the state tournament for the first time, like you said, in um, 63 years. So it was good to get to Des Moines. Uh, we didn't play well out of the gate, but exciting time for our kids. The community was great um, supporting our kids. And, um, you know, that was, that was fun for the community, fun for all our young kids, and obviously fun for the kids playing basketball. So uh, that was a highlight kind of the winter. Um, our wrestlers were also great. Um, uh, Anthony Sherry placed fourth at, at state at 152 or 160, and Malcolm placed uh, <clears throat> fifth there at 152. So, um, two individual accomplishments there. We were one win away from making the state team duels, lost to Des Moines Valley there um, in the regional final, I guess you would say. So, that was good, and the girls' basketball had a, had a pretty good year. Um, obviously, with Harlan and Lewis Central at the top of the conference there in Red Oak, um, a pretty good conference race there so pretty good winner um, going back to the fall our, our volleyball team set a school record for wins at 16 um, so we're on the right track there and getting better there um, football may not have won a lot of games but um, three games within you know lost to Atlantic by one lost the winner set by four lost to um, TJ by one or two there so three wins within uh you know five or six points there so um and then our boys and girls cross-country teams were, were also good so um we're excited about uh what's coming up in the future and everything that's that's going on and now we're gearing up for the spring here so yeah just last night both boys and girls track teams win the south division and if you kind of look at you know the north either favorites or co-favorites for i mean the entire deal and i think do you host the uh the hawkeye 10 conference track meet okay so you do i guess uh, i mean track season looks pretty uh, promising right uh a lot of kids back on from uh last year's both teams who won uh conference titles the girls i think the first time um since 1975 the boys have currently won four straight conference titles so they're trying to get their fifth in a row the girls are trying to get two in a row but um i think our kids are just excited to be outside and be running you know they've been in, indoors here for about the last month and a couple indoor meets and now get started with the, the southern meets last night so um like a lot of good kids back coaches are doing a great job we're excited we do host uh hawkeye 10 here may 7th so that'll be a fun night for our kids as well as the community of glenwood to be able to bring all those teams in here we'll talk a little about the other spring sports i know soccer is always huge here in glenwood uh always successful programs both uh you know always boys and the girls have really come up here recently as well and then uh tennis and golf i know they don't get a ton of uh, credit but I, I like to give them all the credit they deserve so can you talk about all those other spring sports right yep uh boys soccer it looks like is, is ranked eighth out of the gate obviously that's based on last year's um you know state qualifier performance we lost a lot of great seniors but got a lot of good kids back um, I know our seniors and juniors will step up and continue to lead that group. Um, so, boys look to you know look to try and build on on what they got. The girls uh, got a lot of seniors back on from last year's team, so um, we're hoping to compete for a conference title there. Um, moving over to tennis and golf, got high numbers out, um, so we're looking to continue to build on what we've been able to do there. Um, those sports are just so hard early on because you're not outside a whole lot. Now we've been fortunate the last couple of weeks to have some nice weather to get out there, but um, you got to practice in order to in order to play well. So golf golf sometimes struggles early because you aren't in that routine of playing outside and playing golf all the time. And tennis is the same when it's raining out. Really don't have a great place to practice. So um, yeah, it should be a good spring here, and we're looking forward to getting all those sports uh, going. Boys soccer opens up tomorrow night with a JV match, and then uh, kind of next week we get everything going. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> Take a brief look at, I guess, forward to baseball and softball, and I'm sure some of those that stuff's going on as well. I know you've got a new softball coach. Can you tell me about uh, that a little bit? And then you know, baseball with Coach Elam, they always seem to uh, find a way. Right. Um, yeah, kind of a unique uh, time with, with the softball. We hired uh, Tom Horton. He's the head softball coach at Bellevue East, teaches at Bellevue East uh, um, middle school over there. So we're excited to get him on board um, going through that process. It's, it's tough to find softball and baseball coaches as well as teaching positions because it's kind of a summer. They're kind of contracted in until the end of the year and then the, 
that season starting. So um, we're fortunate to get Tom down here. He's going to do a great job. He's been working with our pitchers and catchers, obviously, early on and been down to meet meet the kids. And uh, I think our kids are excited about that. So um, we were 22 and 10 or 22 and 11 last year on the softball side and lost to Norwalk there in the uh, in regional. So, you know, we think we can compete for a conference uh, championship here and hopefully maybe possibly get to the state tournament for the first time since 1979. So um, we're excited about the softball season. It's, we'll get started here. They start practice, I think, the second week there in May. Mm -hmm. On the boys' side, Coach Elam, uh, it's got the boys, you know, they're, they're throwing and they're probably doing some hitting on their own and um, getting geared up for that. They'll start here uh, May 4th or that first Monday mm -hmm. there in May. Um, yeah, trying to always compete for conference championships as well as, uh, you know, get past – get to state and win that sub-state final we've been there probably three out of the last four years and i think we've lost probably to harlan in three out of those four so um we know they'll they'll be there in the end and we just got to find a way to um, keep getting better throughout the year and be playing our best baseball at the end can you speak to the success glenwood has seen here over i don't know if it's you know half about five six seven years it doesn't really seem to be any end in sight it seems like every sport's got uh is on the come or has been to the the big level i guess what's and for me, growing up, when I and probably you too, Glenwood wasn't really at this level. What what happened? Right. Um, well, I think we built a new school here, a new high school, um, five or six years ago. I think we're going in, into year six. So um, that obviously helps change your culture when you're adding new buildings, new facilities. Um, I think our kids have bought into what our coaches are trying to teach them. I think the community's bought in and invested in a lot of time of getting those youth programs going. And I think we're starting to see some of the rewards that a lot of those parents and youth coaches put in that time early on and you know we're starting to see some of that rewards now so um, between the new school um, probably some new coaches some new uh, leadership at the top that always that always helps but there's the uh, investment and a focus on athletics as well as activities as well as facilities um, the new high school here um, it all helps but kind of once you get going in one sport and take it into the other sports I think that all uh, carries on and kind of a domino effect and so we're very confident with our youth sports programs coming up I think the future is very bright and we're just hoping to continue to allow kids to have a great experience as well as compete for conference titles and try and make state tournaments and ultimately win state championships. You touched a little bit on the uh, facilities. Can you take us through maybe the last, uh, well, since you've been here anyway, the kind of the stuff that has been added, and, and then you're working on a new uh, project as well? Right. Um, I guess I'm in year three here, so we've we've added a, a new soccer complex. We've added some, some bleachers and some lights down there, so it allows us to play a little later in the night, not have to start games at 4 or 4.30, especially early on in the spring. Um, new baseball, softball bleachers that have really helped that complex over there, as well as press box for – the media guys so mm -hmm. I hopefully they appreciate that um, and then uh, the new project we're working on currently working on right now auxiliary gym um, that will allow us to go 94 feet college regulation court um, main court as well as side courts which will be the same as what we currently have in our gym so that'll be a big thing practice wise right now um, you know girls practice after school from 3 30 5 30 then we bring the boys in from 5 30 7 30 and all our freshman practices are six in the morning and cheer and dance at six in the morning so it gets to be tough in the winter but having another gym now on site will help so with the project um, not only the gym but um, we'll have a new weight room as you know which is almost double in size through 38 39 um, you know 38 3900 square feet which will help as well as uh, our current wrestling room will be we'll take over our current weight room so that will allow us to put three mats down so that will help and then uh two additional locker rooms will be uh placed with the with the project so uh, we're hoping for an august 1st uh completion date um they got a little behind schedule early on with it being so wet in the fall but the last couple of weeks have really helped so we're hoping uh to get that rolling here this summer and first part of next year and um it's only gonna be a benefit to our student athletes as well as the community of glenwood Great. On a personal level, for you, what are you, 27, 28? 29. 29, okay. 29, 29 years old. Did you, did you expect you'd be in a position like this? Was this, was this a goal of yours to be uh, at this point in this, uh, at this age? Uh, the goal of mine was to get back in the Hawkeye 10 and be an AD. Now, I, I, I did not expect to be here this early. Um, kind of the timing and um, the opportunities mm -hmm. presented themselves, so, so it all worked out. But 
Um, very fortunate to be here. I love the Hawkeye 10, obviously playing at Harlan. Um, I know a lot of the ADs when I was playing, now having a, the opportunity to work with a lot of those guys um, is great. I mean, you got a lot of veteran guys that have been around for a while. I know um, Mr. Sweeney's retiring here at the end of the year, but it's done it for 15 years at Atlantic and now Shenandoah. Um, Coach Osborne, who I played for at Harlan, has been here for 15 years, and Mr. Weaver's up at Denison has been here for uh, 10, 12 years. So a lot of these guys, you know, and there's mm -hmm. all those other ADs, Bevins is in there and Ir Irvin and Alexander at Atlantic, and I know I'm missing some other ones. But those guys have all helped me. Uh, I've been mentors to me as I'm as we all go through this business together. Um, you you kind of need that networking group because um, sometimes only they understand the problems you're dealing with or um, the world that you kind of live in. So I've been fortunate. Um, I'm not going to lie, you know, to be an AD at such a young age. And I'm fortunate to be in the Hawkeye 10 as well as a, a, a great 3A school. And along with that, with the kind of the youth and the energy, I guess a lot of what you do is uh, social media type stuff. And, and I see a lot of your coaches doing that too. Can you talk about uh, that and maybe how that is a positive for you? And then maybe is that something, is that something you kind of encourage your coaches to do? Uh, the more they tweet, the less I have to tweet. So if I got coaches that want to um, control that or run that within their program, obviously – um, away, away golf meets. I, I now know how we did on the road um, before they have to text me or I find out the next day at school. So um, I encourage the technology side because I think our, our parents love to see the communication, love to see what's going on, as well as the alumni in the community like to know how we're doing. So um, it's kind of changed here in the last three, four years with Facebook and technology or Facebook and Twitter and all the technology mm -hmm. stuff. So the more our coaches can do it, the better off we are. Um, I try and tweet out as much as I can about what's going on because I know it helps you as a uh, media person, you know, relate those results or send those results out. And that only gets us more publicity and um, gets the results out there. So, um, yeah, Twitter, Twitter has its pros and cons, you know, but if we can use them for the benefits, especially from the AD side, um, the school side, uh, I think it's great for everyone. Jeff, anything else you want to add? No, nope, just appreciate uh you doing this interview as well as uh, all the coverage you provide for not only Glenwood but all of Southwest Iowa. So um, I'm fortunate to be here. I'm very uh, blessed to be here, and I, I can't thank our community and our booster club and all our coaches and the job that they're doing because that makes my job a lot easier. And they put in the time early on to make us successful, hopefully now moving forward. So. Um, just appreciate that and appreciate you doing the interview today. Right. Jeff, thanks. Thank you.